I just am I'm very appalled that you're not talking really about response times. To get across town, to get, to get, just, I'm going to say, from 11th Street and 6th Avenue, to have Chinese food with my friends on 31st Street and a restaurant on Lexington Avenue took me a half hour, a half hour. And that's just because there was a, a fair closing and the police had barricades up. So I really don't understand where you're coming from with all these response times. I, I think every minute matters. And I think people's lives are at jeopardy on the west side. And you're talking about people from lower Manhattan to 59th Street. Um, I'm appalled. We need a hospital trauma one center for you to take people to. Because whatever stability you're doing, in the EMTs, I mean, I value it. My, my son is studying right now to be an EMT. But I, I just really have trouble with your response times. I have trouble with whatever you're discussing about ambulances and what's being done in the ambulances. I, I think people are dying. I don't think we're getting accurate facts. Right. I'm second to that. We'll have, man, you'll have a chance to talk. Um, but could you elaborate maybe a little bit more on the uh, response time? Uh, and we don't have to hear these statistics. This is not right. Okay, let me ask the first. Who's working for the mayor? He doesn't care about the West Side. Okay. That's right. Okay, ma'am. As far as you refer response. I respect you, but you're working for the mayor. Okay. If, if I can simply answer your question, I, I will attempt this. Okay? You refer to response time to the hospital. Uh, we count response time from the time we get to the call to the time we get to the scene. We count the transport time from the time we take the person from the scene to the hospital. So when you use response time, I'm using response time from the time we get the call to the time we get to your house. That data is available on the website. That data is available through the committee. And you can see a segment one through three calls as well as others. As far as... I'm sorry, can you finish your turn over? The transport time is also going to be disclosed to us. The transport, the transport time will also be disclosed to you as well as the number of transports and where the people were transported to. All that's going to be available. You guys can go through your community board head for that. Thank you. Getting to the patient is one thing. Getting to a hospital has become longer, obviously. Because you go into hospitals that are on the east side, up north, up down south, and uh, it's that some of those two trips that are, are crucial here. And that's what will add minutes and minutes and minutes to ultimately getting to a hospital. And I think that's what, uh, that's what this board and everyone else has to consider in terms of does the root and plan really solve the problem, or, or does it create a situation where more very vital minutes are added to the, to the total minutes of getting to a hospital? So I do agree with you, sir. Obviously, if there's something not there, you have to travel longer to get to the next stop. No one is saying that transport down to the hospital is not changed. It has. It's taking us a little bit longer to get you to the hospital in a safe and prudent manner. Uh, one of the reasons that we're, you're holding the, uh, that the board is holding this hearing today is because I, several weeks ago, I was standing at 14th Street and 5th Avenue and I observed two fire department ambulances coming from the east side heading west with the sirens blaring and they weren't able to get through the traffic easily. I mean, Thank it just you. took a long Thank time. You, Those two went through and then a few minutes later there was a third one also having difficulty. That? So that was, that was when it occurred to me that they're coming all the way from the east to go west to pick up someone and then having to come back again. So that's when I, I first contacted Quinn's office when uh, Noah Isaacs was still working there. And that's when he, t he, he investigated and he mentioned that you were going to have the 23rd Street uh, dispatch place. But I don't think that's good enough. Now, I've, al I've also heard from people, I haven't seen it myself, that there are ambulances parked on Fifth Avenue occasionally, your, your fire department ambulances, presumably waiting for calls. I don't know what they're doing there. And I would really like to get a clearer picture 
of the ambulances that are available in the village, and I want to know why we can't have a dispatch area from the villa, from the Bortu area in Greenwich Village. 23rd Street is fine for Chelsea. They need it too. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there, but we need one down here. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We have a facility located on Clinton Street by South Street at Station 4. That's Where? Clinton and South. Way down that's not in this board either. We have, we have ambulances that are strategically placed throughout the community that you see on cross street locations. Just because they leave that particular facility, they only start their day and end their day there, but they're strategically placed throughout lower Manhattan, throughout the entire borough and throughout citywide. I can provide all the data again of where maps, where all the ambulances are sitting for their cross street location, the amount of calls they do, and where they sit is merely where they're parked when they're not getting a call. The ambulances that you refer to going through a transverse road like 14th Street or any other transverse road that tries to cross east and west, it is usually an issue throughout the borough of Manhattan. It's not only one ambulance that's going through, sometimes they're going back and forth simply on where the next call comes from. We use a dispatch system that has three frequencies for the borough of Manhattan. Because you mentioned the word frequency, I figure I would just elaborate. We have a Manhattan South frequency, a Manhattan Central frequency, and a Manhattan North frequency. That's how it's broken up. Our units are strategically separated in boundaries and dispatched by different dispatchers to meet the call volume that comes in. As far as seeing two ambulances going in a particular direction, that's not that uncommon because we sometimes do dispatch two ambulances to a particular call type, as I elicited before with a cardiac arrest or a high priority call. Where the ambulances sit is basically on, on a corner that's designated because we see high call volume in that particular area and it's strategically placed there to respond to those calls. At the end of the tour, they go back to a facility like Station 4 on South Street, like the new Station 7 on 23rd in the High Line, or Bellevue Hospital, Metropolitan Hospital, Harlem Hospital, <coughs> Beth Israel, and the various hospitals that run ambulances. <laughs> They all turn out of different places and go sit on corners. hospitals that are far away from here. What if, what, where are these ambulances sitting? Are they on 5th Avenue? Are they on 7th Avenue? Some are on 5th Avenue. Some are on the east side. Some are on the west side. They're, they're scattered throughout. Some are BLS. Some are ALS. Basic life support and advanced life support. They're strategically placed in the community based on years of data and constant trending of where the calls are coming in, and we're trying to meet those calls by putting those units on those street corners. So quite often you'll see an ambulance sitting there waiting for a call. That's because that's the corner they're assigned. I, I was a nurse at St. Vincent for 25 years, okay? I, I love you guys. We have the best EMS in yes. the world. Yes, we do. Okay. Response time is not transport time. You came in talking about response time, was selling us on that, okay, that number, which was a good sale. Transport time is totally different, and everybody knows what it takes to get from the west side to the east side. It's yes. impossible. Yes. Okay. The other thing is St. Vincent's had a very big, not a very big, I shouldn't say big, Coleman 8 at St. Vincent's was a pediatric floor. A trauma one, a level one trauma center has to have a pediatric specialist in the ER and a pediatric group. So to say we didn't have pediatric services is entirely wrong. if needed. So you were totally covered in St. Vincent's. Okay? <coughs> I, are you, I heard you mention cardiac cath lab. Okay? This new freestanding ER will not have a cardiac cath lab. There are no stents being put in. So I want to know what your protocol is going to be when you pick somebody up. Will you take them to this freestanding ER or will you be like the city of Miami who totally disallows the, the ambulances to go near a freestanding emergency room because you guys will be liable if you make the wrong call. That's right. Yes. Okay, I have, a, I have another one. Okay, I have a few. When the World Trade Center went down, where'd you transport to first? Hello. Hello, I was there. I was there. I saw Where'd you transport to first? St. Vinny's. No, where did you transfer? They were the go-to level one trauma center, right? Low Manhattan. 
Can I answer that? Well, do you have any other that third question? Yeah. Uh, we can answer that. Okay. We'll take your first one. Okay. So if we have a STEMI patient or a patient that needs cardiac catheterization, we contact telemetry because we have to wind up getting a notification to the particular facility that has a STEMI center or a cath lab. If the facility doesn't have it, we're not permitted to go there. So if this model that's coming up of a freestanding ER doesn't have it, we're not permitted to take that particular patient, nor would we take a patient where it would be no good. Wow. Okay, so, so the that's protocol. ER does, is, is an urgent care center for really, with a few bells and whistles. So, so I really don't want to postulate on what this freestanding ER. Okay, good. Okay. You have a second part. You um, have 911. So uh, the Trade Center, 911, that whole. Yeah. Thing. So the great data suggestion, unfortunately, we were there that day, is a lot of people self evacuated and overwhelmed with particular ERs that are in lower Manhattan. St. Vincent's being one of them, Deakin being another one, and there were patients spread throughout lower Manhattan. And many patients were shipped, some to New Jersey, some over to Brooklyn, many uptown. And, the, and at the final end, after days and days and days, it became not so much a rescue effort or a transport to the hospital, it became a recovery effort, or a recovery of those particular folks who were in the World Trade Center. So just to answer your question, those ERs were overwhelmed in the first two hours of the disaster, and it had nothing to do with 911. It had everything to do with. No, but my point was you transported to the closest level one trauma center because that's what your protocol calls for. Yes, we did. Okay. And when St. Vincent's was standing there, we took patients there. Right. But it's not there today, okay, and but if we but don't I have that. I just want the board to understand that without St. Vincent's, the transport time. Cross town, uptown is impossible. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's not his job. His job is to sell you that. He, no. His job is well, to sell you on the side, but not. To One of the Can you explain we, what you meant by for, geographical nightmare? Geographical nightmare is, is simply a comment that says, if there was something here on the west side that's no longer here, I can't go here anymore. I have to go someplace. Yeah geographically close that has that particular designation of a stroke center or a STEMI center or a 911 receiving hospital. So that's what I meant by geographical. Thank you.